the biggest asset fund manager in the world, BlackRock, who own, it seems, everything, are building a battery only 30 minutes away from my house. It's the second biggest battery in the world. And it's being built on the site of a former coal power plant, which was spectacularly blown up because, well, it was coal and it sucked. Anyway, this battery is serving a pretty intriguing purpose. Now, we often think that a battery works like this. Sun and wind generate electricity via solar and wind turbines, send it to the battery, the battery stores that energy, and then sends it into the grid when it's needed. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. Here's how it actually works. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. The Memora Power Station used to be one of the biggest coal-fired power stations in Australia. It had four 350 megawatt English electric steam-driven turbo alternators for a combined capacity of 1,400 megawatts. The station was located near the coast here in northern New South Wales in Australia. However, in July 2012, the coal generators were permanently retired and they were then demolished. Now the biggest battery in Australia and the second biggest battery in the world is being built on that site, on that exact site, in fact, right on top of where that coal power plant was. Now, Renew Economy says that most people think they understand what a battery is, but they don't really. Everyone has one in their phone, in their appliances, and even in their car. But in terms of the grid, battery storage is the most misunderstood of all technologies, mostly because it doesn't just store energy, as most people assume. It has many strings to its bow. And if you think about it, this is the area where Tesla makes so much money. This system of battery energy storage is actually quite complicated. And Tesla software gives it an advantage over its rivals. Now, Tesla's massive batteries, which it deploys worldwide, and as you can see, its sales in this area are growing enormously faster than its EV sales are, provide the company a significant amount of revenue. But it doesn't win these contracts simply by being the cheapest. It's never the cheapest. But companies build Tesla batteries because of the software that's needed to solve complex issues. The Waratah Super Battery is a case in point. When it is in full operation in early 2025, the 850 megawatt, 1,680 megawatt hour facility will be the biggest battery in Australia and the second biggest in the world. It will also be, according to its developer and owner, Acacia Energy, which uh, is owned by mega asset firm giant BlackRock, the single biggest asset ever connected to the grid. This will be the largest ever single DUID in the history of batteries this size. There is no partitioning, just a single asset, said Nick Carter, the CEO of the company. The primary function of this super battery, called the Waratah super battery, is not to store energy for later use. At least, not in the way you would think, says Renew Economy. It is best described as a giant shock absorber, holding capacity in reserve. The capacity it holds in reserve allows the major transmission lines bringing power to the major demand centers in Sydney, the most populous city in Australia, Wollongong, which is a city south of Sydney, and Newcastle, which is where I live, the city north of Sydney. And it gives them much greater capacity. In fact, it allows them to be connected smoothly to massive amounts of solar and renewable energy. We like to refer to this as a virtual transmission service, the company said. We think this is a really important use case for the energy transition because we always hear in the media issues around how much money it takes and how long it takes to build new transmission. And this particular project is a great example of what can be done with batteries. The technology exists now. These services exist now. The way to think about this is really the utilization of existing line infrastructure. Currently, those lines that are heading out to the renewable energy zone, as in heading out to solar farms or wind farms, are only really run at about half the capacity that they can generate. When the power station is closed, there's a coal power plant being closed nearby, another one. The issue is evacuating the power from the renewable energy zones, renewable energy farms, solar farms, 
and sending that power directly to consumers who need it in Sydney, Wollongong and Newcastle. You can't do it without running the lines hard. And the only way you can run the lines hard is to have this service with 700 megawatts sitting in reserve. So you can start to run both of those lines further up to around 850 megawatts each. And if one of them trips, in other words, if one of the transmission lines trips, the battery ramps up immediately and renewable energy zone ramps down. So you can keep the single line running. That allows the grid to reconfigure the network in enough time to stop any kind of load shedding, or in other words, stop it from shutting down. So we think this is an amazing service. We see applications for this type of service all around the world. So pretty much every transmission upgrade is looking at this option. Now, I think a lot of people don't realize, but companies like BlackRock, they are investing billions of dollars into these energy projects. In other words, they're pretty much taking over grids all around the world. The truth here is, guys, even though renewable energy is fantastic and it's what we all need to move to as quickly as possible, we are sort of seeing this takeover of national energy markets by global conglomerates like BlackRock, who recognize the billions of dollars that they can make by investing in these mega batteries, solar farms and wind farms as well. They are taking over energy grids all around the world. The company Acacia, owned by BlackRock, says it is on track to finish the project on time and many of the concrete foundations have been poured. It has hosted dignitaries at the site and it says it has deliberately sized the battery above the contract with the Australian energy market operator. So it will actually have another 150 megawatts and 280 megawatt hours to trade in the arbitrage market. And basically that enables it to make a lot of money. Now the key here is big batteries like this, they actually do something very interesting. They bankrupt peaker plants. Now peaker plants serve energy grids by basically being reserve energy. When you need more power on a really hot day and everyone comes home from work and puts their air conditioners on, that can trip the grid in many markets worldwide. And then peaker plants, often coal power plants or gas plants, will jump in to make up the excess energy needed, but they often will charge approximately 70 times more than the average cost of energy. These are the easy low hanging fruit that Elon Musk has talked about. Elon Musk talks about making billions of dollars in this market, and that's what he's talking about. Bankrupting those peaker plants, they are the low hanging fruit that companies like BlackRock and Tesla are targeting, and it's very easy to target them because even if they sold energy at a price of 10 times higher than the average, that's still a lot cheaper than the 70 times that Pika plants price it out. Now, the big advantage that a battery has over a Pika plant is it can basically send energy to the grid instantaneously, whereas a Pika plant takes approximately half an hour to actually ramp up. Now, the funny thing about all of this is that this battery is being built like so many other big batteries across the world on the ruins of a shuttered coal-fired power station. And many others are being built next to existing coal-fired power stations, which of course will go bankrupt within the next decade, or simply close their doors because they can't run efficiently. Part of the reason are the batteries being installed next door. In this case, this battery is actually being installed on the top of an old coal stockpile. These big heaps of coal, that is where the battery is, said Danny Liu, the senior vice president at US-based Powerwind, which is providing the smarts for the battery management system, the software, while pointing to an old picture of the, of the Munmora power station, which is, of course, no longer in operation. We're all playing a role in the energy transition. Just the fact that this project is turning that coal-fired power station into an energy storage system is a real example of what is possible in this energy transition.